possible through the generosity of our partners in progress. College at the Crossing in Bella Vista. The Bank of Gravit, caretakers of the Arkansas spirit. The Ozark Barbecue and Smokehouse in Jane, Missouri. Smith Family Chiropractic in Bentonville. Jody Parsons Back Yonder. Simmons Suites in Bentonville. The Arkansas Missouri Railroad in Springdale. A.G. Russell Knives in Rogers. B. LaRue in Bentonville and Rogers. This is Petra from Boca Raton, Florida. And this is the Out of the Norm Show. Where the stories are all about you. Hi, Norm Allen with you on another version of the Out of the Norm Show. You know, I'm really enjoying this Tanyard Creek Falls nature trail in Bella Vista. It's supposed to be a waterfall down here, but right now the water's not falling. But it really is a gorgeous place to take a springtime walk and enjoy some of this beautiful foliage like this dogwood that's right behind me. Today's Out of the Norm story is about the A.G. Russell Knife Company in Rogers, Arkansas. It's one of the largest mail order companies in, in the nation, or maybe even in the world, on specializing in knives and things for men and hunting. And Well, you'll find out in just a little while. We're going to meet A.G. Russell and his wife, Goldie, and we're going to find out all about A.G. Russell Knives in Rogers, Arkansas today on the Out of the Norm Show. So please, don't go away. There's some good stuff coming, and I think you'll find it very interesting enough that you might want to just stop by there one afternoon when you're driving that direction. We'll be right back after a short break with more stuff on the Out of the Norm Show where the stories are all about you. on TV can be entertaining. Falling at home can be devastating. Each year, one in three Americans over 65 falls in their own home, breaking bones and shattering lives. For older people, any broken bone can be serious. A broken hip, potentially lethal. To make your home as fall safe and bone friendly as it can be, visit orthoinfo.org slash falls. A public service message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, where staying on your feet is doctor's orders. Hey, welcome back to the Out of the Norm show. I'm, I'm with a gentleman that shaves with one of these every morning. Is that right? <laughs> Every other day. Every other day, because it's not quite as tight now. I want to introduce you to Mr. A.G. Russell from A.G. Russell Knives right here in Rogers, Arkansas. This is, you've, if you've driven up and down the freeway, you've seen their beautiful building. It's, it's very prominent. And I've always wondered what was there, so we decided to let you in on it today. So maybe you'll stop and visit. Mr. Russell, I am so glad to have you on the show today and to talk about knives. Now, this is something I don't know a lot about. Well. There's a lot to know, though, isn't it? I'm, I'm a year or two older than you, and when I was a boy, there were no boys without knives in the South. Right. Now, I can't speak for New York or California or Idaho, but I'll bet you Idaho, every boy had a knife, too. Uh, America was rural 70 years ago, and... Uh, more people worked on farms than worked in the city. Right. And everybody carried a knife. You couldn't get by the day without a knife in your pocket. You had string to cut or wood to whittle or something that needed a knife. Right. So we all carried knives. And I was fascinated with them from age four. Uh, made my first one, real one. I made wooden ones, uh, but my first real knife I made when I was nine. Uh, it, it wasn't much of a knife, but uh, I got better as time passed. 
but I found that while making knives for fun is an absolute world of fun, making knives for a living is hard, dirty work. So I changed from being a knife maker to a knife designer. And I do a lot better at designing than I did at making. But people would find me and they would come to the farm to buy knives and whetstones. And uh, this, this worked and then the business got, I would hire farm wives to help do the mailing and the packaging. And the business got to the point where I couldn't find enough farm wives in this farm community. So I moved to Springdale and uh, rented a building and hired people and got up to about 15 people. Uh, and uh, business grew and grew. And pretty soon we, we were selling a million dollars worth of knives a year. But and now these were not just pocket knives and things. These were all kinds of things for commercial use and butchers uh, and things like no, that? No, no. Okay. No. Uh, pocket knives, hunting knives, and a few kitchen knives. Uh, the kitchen knife business was very slow for me for many, many years. Uh, the, uh, gradually, as, as I developed my own knives, I began to, to reach for a higher level. But the interesting thing is that I was the first mail order knife company. And about six years after I started, somebody else opened a mail order knife company. And then another and another and another. And uh, I always focused on the high end the best product I could find. And that's really what has built my business and enabled me to use that guarantee and make it work. But also you, you were making knives to begin with, but you, you got out of that after a while. Well, the, the, the knife business is, is in many segments, but basically it's production or factory knives right. and handmade knives. Right. And I was making handmade knives uh, and dealing in factory knives. Uh, and we've continued that. I have a knife maker here today that makes handmade knives for us to sell by mail and in the store. Are those primary collectibles then? Well, collectibles and high-end using knives. Okay. Uh, one man's $200 knife is, is the most expensive knife he'll ever buy. And he's got it in a shadow box on his wall. The next man, he's $200 is his everyday pocket knife. And he's buying $5,000 knives to put on his wall. Well, tell me a little bit about design. What do you look for in design? I mean, what, well, what are we talking about when we say knife design? <clears throat> that knife right. has a line, okay. a curve, no disturbances in that curve. And that curve can be straighter or less so. Uh, what is the advantage of a curved or not Well, curved? no, no, that's not an advantage. Is it ergonomic? It's, I mean, it, how it fits your hand? There, there's a lot of that. Okay. That's important, but line. If, if you see a painting and it's slightly off, you notice that. And if you see a knife design and that knife doesn't fit your eye. You don't pick it up. If it fits and fills your eye, you reach down and pick it up. And if it fits your hand, you say, wow, I want to own that. So it's, it's a matter of, of not only craftsmanship, but some element of artistry in it right. as well. Right. 
That's right. Now, here is a smaller buoy. We call it, there was a knife maker in California. He was a great knife maker. His knives were selling for two or $3,000 20 years ago. Today, you simply can't find them. So I call this a D.E. Henry buoy or California buoy. And that's handmade in our own shop. It's beautiful. But it doesn't feel heavy at all. I mean, it feels... No, a knife should very... not feel heavy. Uh, all I need is a prime rib to go around this. <laughs> <laughs> now, here is a handmade hunting knife by Bob Dozier in Springdale, Arkansas. Bob Dozier is one of the world's great knife makers. Uh, Self-taught. Uh, he's a world-class welder. He's a nuclear qualified welder. Wow. He can do welding in a nuclear plant. So <clears throat> he's at the top of that field, but he doesn't work as a welder. He works as a knife maker. Now what are the handles on some of these made from? Well now this is Looks my, like wood. That's my carta. Okay. This is Is this. that a stone or, or no, a man made that's layers of cloth in a phenolic resin base. So it gives it a grain. Right. Now this is the same material. And this one's <clears> a little different. That's desert ironwood. So it's real wood then. Real wood, very dense, very hard. This is giraffe bone. Giraffe bone. That's interesting. So all of these, these handle materials are imported from different places around the world just for... Well, this you can, you comes can out of either southern Arizona or northern Mexico. That, of course, is from the plains of Africa. And that is the, the leg bone of giraffe is the densest bone we know. Denser than elephant bones because the weight is the way it's carried and used. And what this is one bone that the hyenas don't eat. It's probably very expensive. You, too. you, you take a Cape buffalo, he dies and he disappears because the, the hyenas and the vultures eat the meat and then the hyenas eat the bones. Because they're real soft and well, they're, they they're marrow in them and all they, that. They, you know, I, I sure. had a Rhodesian Ridgeback and I would give him a beef joint, a knee joint from a beef and he'd just chew on it until there was nothing left but a little piece of cartilage from the kneecap. Wow. I mean, he'd eat the bone. But this doesn't get eaten because it's so dense. So they pick it up wherever the giraffe died and they clean it and, and bleach it with uh, what you bleach your hair with. Peroxide. Peroxide. Right. And ship it here and we pay eighty ninety dollars a bone for it and then cut it up and get four or five knives out of it but that's titanium that's nylon that's a molded handle to make a less expensive knife that's carbon fiber and titanium and here we are back to what I call Rucarda which is the same phenolic resin with layers of cloth that he uses. But mammoth ivory, uh, pearl, mother of pearl shell, there, there's no end to the things you can use for knife handles. Some of the most beautiful are stabilized woods. They take blocks of wood and they put them under a hard vacuum and it put put a plastic material into the chamber and the wood takes it up and it hardens 
and you have a wood that doesn't need a finish, it contains its own polish. Wow. And when you polish it, it's gorgeous. We use burl, which is typically too soft for a knife handle, but when stabilized, makes a gorgeous knife handle. But the industry now that we're all the way up into the 21st century, there's still a call for a lot of knives even now because your business is thriving. Well, what are the, where are knives being bought these days? Not just where, but I mean, for what purposes? Our business is run on the idea that we produce a knife they can't buy anywhere else. They can't go to Lowe's wherever they live and buy the kinds of knives that we sell. They can't go to Walmart anywhere in the world and buy knives that look like ours. Mm -hmm. uh, and have you ever known anybody who had his garage filled with wrenches and uh, oh sure yeah. okay yeah that man goes down to Sears and Roebuck uh, once a week and looks to see what's new in the Craftsman tool right uh, these uh, what we have is a slight variation of that disease in our customers now Many people buy one good knife, and that lasts them for the rest of their life. Right. That's not a good customer for us. <laughs> you like the I, I, I love him. I've sold a million people like that a knife. Right. But I don't make any money on him. Right. Because it costs me more to get his business than I get from his business. Right. But the typical knife buyer buys a knife once a month, sometimes once a year. But that's a good customer. Sure. Because every year you can count on them to buy another knife. And they like to buy the same brand, too. So if they see an A.G. Russell and they love it. Now, there's a lot of that. There are people who collect buck knives or Schrade knives or A.G. Russell knives. But there are way more people who look at a knife and say, I like that, don't matter who made it. Right. Now, some people who are like that won't buy a knife from China or a knife from Japan. I understand. Mm -hmm. But we make knives wherever we can get a good knife made. And, and now I have to tell you, you can probably hear my voice is going. You're going to have to talk to Goldie. Well, we're looking forward to that. We're going to take a quick break and take a look at some of the knives again. And we're going to visit with Mrs. Russell, Goldie Russell. And she's going to tell us a little bit about the business and the structure of 21st, uh, 21st century business in, in the knife industry. And we're going to talk about that in a little more, probably some more surprises. And we're going to visit the store right here at Rogers, Arkansas. So don't you dare go away. There's more good stuff right here because we're, i got to say this, we're on the cutting edge today. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back to the Out of the Norm shows. I promised you not only have we enjoyed a visit with kind of the history and design with the true craftsman and Mr. A.G. Russell at A.G. Russell Knives, but this is his wife, Goldie Russell, who's involved with this business in a really big way, aren't you? Yes, for a long time. About, um, I've been president of the company for about 20 years. What? Well, of course, I guess it was the relationship with AG that kind of brought you into this, but, oh. but how did your interest in knives come about? Well, actually, I, I, I always say I married into it. Um, I, uh, I really didn't know knives at all except as a, a paring knife or a kitchen knife, you know, right. or a, a pocket knife that my dad might have carried. And then I met AG, and I was astounded at uh, the, the value of the knives and the collectability of the knives and the high quality steel that were in the knives. And my background is actually in art. Oh. And so I was a high school art teacher for years. And so I have that art training. And so when I would go to a handmade knife show with him, I was just amazed that there were all these people who were 
um, uh, practicing their craft and mm -hmm. were actually selling the product that they made and were making a living from it. So that that's where my interest in it comes from. But mostly, I'm more the business side of it. I don't have a business degree. I don't have a business background. And it's really complicated too, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. not a simple little storefront no, kind of thing, is it? No, it is not. It is not. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we have 37 employees today. Uh, we are a mail order company. That's our our basic uh, structure. We do have a store here along mm -hmm. I-540 in Rogers. But the the 95 to 98 percent of our sales comes through mail order. And um, we process about 100,000 orders a year wow. through here. So that's um, taking the orders both through the Internet and on the phones uh, and then processing the, those orders, packing them, shipping them out of here. We also build our own catalogs here. We do all of the, um, the file creation for the printers. We, we do the art direction for the photographs. We, mm -hmm. we just do everything in this, in this small company. So starting with uh, everything from the catalog to internet, now those catalogs are not just small catalogs either. You have a lot of things in those catalogs. Well, there, there's probably 200 plus knives in each catalog, and we produce 11 of those catalogs, 11 of those knife catalogs each year. Uh, and then we have also a Russell's gift, Russell's for Men gift catalog that we started in '98 where we sell things of interest to men that are not just knives. So you defined your market with the knives okay. and you know that th that market is buying other items relative right. to that lifestyle. So your lifestyle right. marketing That's more right. than anything. That's exactly right. I mean when you've got a, a mailing list that is mail, mm -hmm. then, you, then you look to what else might they be interested in buying. Right. And that's the way that catalog came about. And you'll see all kinds of things in there, mm -hmm. some, some vests and leather yeah. goods and some toiletry items, yeah. but things that are very masculine yeah. and sports-minded mm -hmm. kind of exactly. things. But you also had some cool toys in there, too. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, periodically at Christmas time, we will uh, pick up something that we think a father or an uncle or a grandfather would like to right. uh, give to a child. Right. And the first thing I think we had was a, a six-foot toboggan. And this was a number <laughs> of years ago. That, And actually we had it in one catalog last year, I think. And we did a sled, one of the old-fashioned right. maple wood with metal runner type right. sleds. And then this past year uh, we offered the um, reproductions of the old pedal cars. And uh, we had pedal planes and pedal cars, and then there was a trike, this real cute little trike that was dressed up to kind of look like a Harley, you know, or something, of yeah. a, 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 a biker sort of thing. So those are cool. So when an order comes in, okay, we've just gotten an order, what's the process you go through as, before it goes out the door? Well, um, obviously, you have to enter the order into the computer and process that through and, and charge the credit cards and right. uh, and then you have to pick the product and what you see behind us here on these shelves is the what we call our picking shelves okay. and what we're standing in front of are shelves that um, have knives on them so okay. you got all these little bitty boxes okay but if you got back deeper into the stacks you'd find bigger boxes that sure. are the Russell's for Men product but it has to be picked it has to be checked, have, we have to make sure the orders are correct and then, um, then it has to be packed and you know run across the manifest. And uh, we mainly right now are shipping through UPS and the post office, and so those are all prepared and run across the manifest. So there's people pulling orders in the warehouse, and there's people processing the paperwork. Right. And then it goes to the ascent or the delivery line, I'll call it, where right. it goes from one point to the other before it goes out the door. Right. Yeah. And so there's a lot of yeah. people involved there. There's in. a lot of people, a lot of processes, a lot of steps. And we're very, very careful with our orders to make sure that the person who placed the order is getting the right thing. You know, um, it's very uh, costly, not only in money, but also in, in customer satisfaction if a customer doesn't get what he, what he ordered. And Mr. Russell talked about that, that that's a real tantamount part of your business, it isn't it? It absolutely is and has been from the time he started the company. In Where all do you ship to? We ship... Uh, actually, we ship all over the world, but uh, I mean, there's some countries we won't ship to because of credit card fraud sure. and all that sort of thing. But uh, but mainly, we ship all over the the 50 states. Um, so there's there's common. folks all over the country that's getting oh, this stuff. Absolutely. absolutely. Now, if we wanted to go to the website and find out about uh, 
uh, how to get stuff, where would we go? It's just agrussell.com for the knives and russellsformen.com for the, for the men's gift card. And there's probably a link between the two. So there you definitely can, is. To yeah. be able to, to yeah. check either one. Absolutely. Well, this is fascinating. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, we're going to take a look in the store also and look around. And uh, I don't know, there's some cool T-shirts in there and a few other things. <laughs> now, this is not a commercial. This is just something, you know, you drive by here mm -hmm. on the freeway. Right. And a lot of people do this every single day yeah. and may have not come in. And, and this we is have, I when I talk to the clerks in the store, they tell me that every single day people come into the store and say, I have driven by this place for years and I finally decided I'm, I'm just going to stop and see what it is. And so, it, and there's a lot of traffic on 540 oh, yeah. out here, so there's a lot of people that drive by our store every day. What do you think of the nature of business in northwest Arkansas? I mean, we've seen a lot of, of, of economic problems across the country, and I know, especially mail order, you probably get, your business didn't go down as much as retail stores would. Well, I don't know. We, uh, our business decreased about 25%. Oh. Uh, so it, it took a heavy hit. Yeah. Um, of course, the things that we sell, are not absolutely essential. You don't need them to breathe. You don't need them to eat. Uh, so when things ha when you have when a person has to cut their their spending, this is one of the things that they're going to cut. So, so yeah, we have had a decline in business. We still need stuff that makes you feel good, though. Yes, that's absolutely right. So we're on our way back up with that. <laughs> I so. think so. So perseverance is the key to any oh, business. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you've been in business you've, here in this location for how long? We've been here since the early '02. Uh, but we were in Springdale prior to that from uh, 1970. He moved into Springdale in two, until 2002. So, so 30, 30 years, you've seen things come and go, but oh, it's always yeah, maintained yeah. itself. This is a very, very important business mm -hmm. to northwest Arkansas, not only for the people who are employed here, but the idea of craftiness and artsiness that you're able to provide an outlet for those people mm -hmm. to display their wear and sell them throughout mm -hmm. the country and throughout the world. That and also, I think, satisfaction from... Uh, uh, for the customer who, um, you know, one of the things that we need in our life is leisure activity. Sure. It's things that we enjoy, not sure. just work, 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 work every day, uh, even though some of us do that, you know. <laughs> but, we don't have a choice about but, that. That's right. <laughs> but uh, we, well, I think we provide leisure activity for a lot of people. And you're going to provide that very soon for all of us novices in a big knife show coming up, aren't that you? That is true. At the end, the last weekend in July every year, there is what we call the A.G. Russell Knife Event that is held at the Embassy Suites, uh, John Q. Hammonds Convention Center here in Rogers. Uh, and we draw exhibitors from all over the country, um, handmade knife makers, the major manufacturers of knives, and it's just a real neat, big event for wow. people who are interested in knives. A lot of folks come into town for that. Absolutely. From all yeah, over the country. Have, we have a crowd every wow. year. Mm -hmm. And it runs three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right. Well, we'll put those letters, uh, that time and everything on the screen okay. so everybody okay. will know. Okay. You'll look for that. Yeah. If You know, if you've never seen any of this stuff, you're missing out on a real craft yeah. that's here in Arkansas as well as uh, supporting a local industry. So, yeah. And if you're just curious, stop by the store. You don't have to buy anything. Come in and look around. There you, you know? go. Yeah. <laughs> and you're open... We're open um, Monday through Friday from uh, 8.30 till 5, and then on Saturday from 9 to 3. Good. Yeah. Well, I thank both of you for, for inviting us in okay. today and to, to learn something and see an industry that's just it's very complex, but it's, it's very American. Yes, absolutely. If we can wave is. the flag a little bit, <laughs> it's very American. Absolutely. And you're also big supporters of the military. We are very big supporters I meant of the to military. ask AG yeah. about that, but uh, yeah. you're... Yes, we are. AG uh, has a background in the military. His father was in World War II, um, a lifetime career in the military, and AG's been very supportive for the troops. We have a program called uh, the War on Troop Boredom, in which we send um, packages, care packages, to the troops overseas. Fantastic. Hoorah. Yeah. Yeah. As a Marine, Thank you. hoorah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks again for having us, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it, meeting new friends and getting to know a little bit more about our community. Okay. Listen, we're going to be back uh, again on another Out of the Norm show. We hope that you've enjoyed this visit to A.G. Russell Knives right here in Rogers, Arkansas. Uh, don't drive by here anymore. Stop in every once in a while <laughs> so and see what's see new. I think you'll enjoy it. If you need some good kitchen knives, that's what I'm looking for, some yeah. good chef knives. We have some great kitchen knives out there. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a great chef can't cook well without a good knife. That is true. And you'll find it right here. <laughs> hey, we thank you again for joining us on the Out of the Norm show. Remember, we'll be out somewhere talking about people, places, things, and events somewhere in America. So if you look out your door and see us coming up, just remember the story could be all about you. We'll see you real soon again on the Out of the Norm Show, where the stories really are all about you. Like loving the South, you need just loving you.